There, is that bad? There we go. Uh, good morning, welcome those of you at home, those on vacation. Glad everyone is here, all of you. Sorry about that. Um, we will be celebrating uh, Holy Communion again this morning. Thank you for your understanding. Last week when we were um, acting out of an abundance of caution and a reminder, uh, two things. One is if you have a marked bulletin, please come up. You can take your mask off at the pulpit and read that, um, that portion uh, of, the, of the worship service and also our singing, uh, as hard as it's gonna be with the great hymns Willie has picked, uh, is to be uh, murmured, except for those of you at home. A few announcements. Um, a reminder that in the back, by the cross over there with the band-aids on it, there is a book. And if you would like to write a specific prayer concern in that book, it will be read during the prayers of the church. Those of you at home are welcome to add your prayer concerns to be read using the Q&A option at the bottom of your Zoom screen. A reminder that the crop walk is today. It leaves, uh, it'll leave at 1.30 from Aldersgate, uh, beginning to assemble at 1. Who are our walkers today? Take a look, and if you, woohoo! If you have not uh, yet and want to support someone, please see any one of those fine folks with their, with their hands uh, in the air. Um, our food ministry distribution was this last week, and while it fluctuates, there was an uptick uh, this week in our numbers, and so we thank you for your contributions. Um, and just to uh, bring home some world events, now eight of our families are from the Ukraine, and they continue to have family in Odessa, where um, life is very, very dangerous. And so we continue to pray, um, not only for those in the midst of the conflict, but um, those who we're, we're learning to know and who are near and dear to our hearts, as uh, this has become a real ministry of prayer and connection and not just handing out food. And so I um, just wanted to make you aware of that so you might continue to pray for these folks. And with that... I invite you to take a deep cleansing breath and to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as the prelude is played.
are gathered in the name in which we are baptized, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. <clears throat> we give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal and all-merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite the boys and girls to come forward at this time. morning how are you this morning are you good hey I have a question for you can you help me with something if we were looking to find a way to get out of the building which way should we go right 
We should go that way. Is there any other way we could go? We could go left over there, you mean? Because that's my left. And that's my right. Very good. Very good. Is there any other way we could go out? Hmm? How? How about straight that way? Which way, Henry, do you think would be the right way to go out? You know what? They're all good ways to go out, aren't they? We could go that way, we could go that way, and we could go that way. Or we could even go out either one of those. There's lots of ways to go out. I'm asking you this question because the followers of Jesus, way, way, way back after Jesus' resurrection, were called followers of the way. And that meant they followed the ways of Jesus. So let's see if we can do some other questions. So if you have a friend who is sad, could you sit with them for a little while? Would that be a good way to be? Hmm? Could it? Oh, I don't know what they're... Oh, there's lots of people here. We'll go over their names later. But do you think if someone was sad, you could sit with them? Would that be a good, a good way to be? Or could you give them a hug? Could that be a good way to be? Come here, buddy. Come here. Could that be a good way to be? Hmm? Yes. Or what if, what if somebody wanted the toy you were playing with? Could you give it to them? Could that be a good way to be? Or what about if you said, come play with the toy with me? Whoa, could that be a good way to be? Yes. Okay, you did pretty well for a long time. All right, so there's lots of good ways we can be because the way of Jesus, can you come here to me, please, Henry? Come here and listen for a moment, please, Henry. Henry. <laughs> the way of Jesus is about kindness and love. And so let's say a prayer, even if we're going to wander. Ah, good and gracious God, thank you that there are lots of ways to be kind and loving. Help us this week to follow your way. And all God's children said, amen. All right, can you grab your shoes? Living God, help us to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's a reading from Acts. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. 
Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. And he answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before the Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue saying, he is the son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my waiting, wailing into dancing, and you have put my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. The second reading is from the book of Revelation. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing, 
to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. According to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, and Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. And they went out and got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, do you? And they answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord! When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. For they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> so I don't mean to date any of us, but I'm, I'm curious as to how many of you uh, had or remember the Bible that was called The Way. Anybody have it? Yeah, yeah, I did. I don't have it anymore. I don't know what happened to it. It was a green paperback, you remember? And it had just those two words, the way, on the front cover with a typeface that could probably only be described as modern hippie, right? And within the words on the dull green cover, there were images of people, you know, the cool kids, the ones who were um, in their bell bottoms and the 
latest in the flowered tight polyester shirts. Oh, how many of you remember that? Yeah, how many of you wore them? Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. They weren't, <clears throat> these people weren't pictured in a church. They weren't, there was a, a, some kind of greenery behind them. They were in a yard, a field, a, somewhere out and about in the world. Because in essence, the photo enacted the words, right? The way, for the way is not just a path or a journey or a, a route to get from here to there. Biblically, biblically, the way is something more. There's no atlas or map that will move you from point A to point B. It is rather a way of life, a way of being, a following on our journey of life. The person of Jesus of Nazareth who lived and died and who was raised again. Early Christian disciples, as I said to the children, they weren't really known as disciples per se in the world. They were rather known as followers of the way. They weren't confined to a building. They didn't go to church. They lived out their faith in their daily life. They are described in the book of Acts as a community of disciples who gave away or sold everything they had, and they gave the proceeds of that or the things themselves to any as they had need. Being a follower of the way was more a matter of being or deciding or living than a manner even of worshiping, although worship is certainly part of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Followers of the way were known in the world for the excellent way they conducted their life, aspiring to the sacrificial love as of Jesus Christ in all that they said and did. Having already received the gift of grace, they responded with prayer, humility, extravagant acts of kindness and grace. It was such a compelling lifestyle that thousands were being baptized and added to the register of converts of the way. Those new converts becoming dedicated as well to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. Converts were baptized. Amazing sermons were preached. Widows and orphans were cared for and fed. The ill and the lame were healed and tended. It was a magnificent witness to the power of the resurrected Christ in the world. And the disciples were constantly on alert, constantly looking out for new people who were being neglected. People who needed to hear the good news of Jesus. And as issues and conflicts were brought to their attention, they immediately, immediately took care of it. What a wonderful community. And Ananias, Ananias is a follower of the way. He is a disciple of Jesus Christ. He was one of that community of faithful that shared all things in common. He prayed, he studied, he sang, he attended to the needs of others alongside of Stephen, and his ear was tuned in to the needs of those around him wholeheartedly desiring to serve Jesus by serving brothers or sisters in need, to baptize and bring to faith new believers. And Jesus came to Ananias in a vision. Woohoo! He called his name. The Lord had important work for Ananias to do. He had a convert. He had a convert he was handing over to Ananias. This man needed teaching. He needed instruction. He needed a laying on of the hands. He needed to become a member of the community. This is Ananias' moment to shine, people. Now, Ananias' heart probably would have done this little pitter-pat, right? Hear Jesus call your name? Ananias, ah, it's my moment. 
He would have waited for that and prayed for that. Oh boy, don't we all do that? Don't we all wait? Don't we all want that? To hear God call our name? Yes? Yes! Don't we want a clear-cut set of instructions to follow Jesus? Yes! Yes! Don't we want to do something awesome for the kingdom of God? Yes! Okay, you're catching on. A little louder next time. Don't we want to hear the voice of the shepherd? Don't we want to hear the voice of the shepherd call us forward in our walk on the way? Yes, yes we do! We want to hear our name called and we want to respond, Here I am, Lord! Yeah. Woohoo! We want to stand up tall and proud and ready. Ready to go. Ready to take the gift of grace that we ourselves have received and extend it out into the world. Yes, we do! And that's what Ananias did, and that's what Ananias said. In the tradition of the prophets, he stood up and he declared, Here I am, Lord, send me. And boy, did the Lord have a job for him. Get up and go, God said. Get up and go, Jesus spoke to Ananias. GPS coordinates have never been so precise. Get up and go to the street called Straight, and there you're going to find the house of Judas. It's the third one, the yellow one on the left. Judas is there and with him. Wait a minute. Did I hear that right? With him? Is a man called Saul. Ooh, you hear the air going out of the balloon? Saul. Saul? Saul? <laughs> And suddenly this follower of the way has a very different answer for Jesus. No way. No way. Not Saul. Not me. Not here. Not now. Not ever. No way. And you know what, friends? I can't blame him. I can't really blame him because Saul has been breathing threats and murder against Ananias and his group of disciples. Saul has been taking all of Ananias' BFFs and dragging them to Jerusalem in chains. Saul, Saul stood by with the blood-stained coats of the murderous crowds while Stephen was being stoned to death. Beautiful, beautiful, faithful Stephen. No way, no how. But you know, the book of Acts does this funny thing. It often pairs conversion stories. There was Cornelius with Peter, and there was the Ethiopian with Philip. And here we have Ananias with Saul to Paul, and we get so distracted by the light show that Jesus provides as he strikes Saul down on the road, and we get all distracted with all of the glitter and the drama that we miss this subtle conversion of Ananias. And yet Ananias' story could be your story. It could be my story. There's Ananias. He gathers with the faithful on a regular basis. He says his prayers, he sings his hymns, he volunteers his little heart out. He worships faithfully. He strives to follow the way of Jesus. He strives to make a difference in the world. He strives to respond to the gift of grace in Jesus Christ by extending grace and mercy to a hurting world. And most of the time, by golly, he's got it. But then God makes re a request that just knocks him off his feet. Saul, you kidding me, Saul? How often? Are we caught off guard by the mercy of Jesus? How often do we think, mm -mm, no, not those people. No way. 
the nature of faith, isn't it? It's nature of being a human, isn't it? That Jesus expects so much more of us than we can possibly imagine. Jesus isn't just calling us to be nice. He, he isn't. Jesus is calling us to something that's revolutionary, a way of life that's transformative, not just for the world, friends, but for you and me sitting here, a way of life that's risky and dangerous and can be full of landmines occasionally. I mean, think about, think about the challenges before us in our day and age. Though people we are called to care for and extend mercy. Eradicating Title 42? Hmm. Hmm. Mm. No, not, no, no way. Not those people. Or, um, or bail reform. Oh, no. Not, not those people. Um, or, uh, <clears throat> take your pick, NRA or gun control advocates, depending on where you sit. No. Oh, no, not those people. <clears throat> How about um, transgender children on a sports field? Mm. Mm. Uh, LGBTQIA families portrayed in, uh, in books in the school library. Oh, oh mm. uh, How about the Palestinians? Oh, no, not those. Uh, Iraqis? Mm, no. Uh, pro protesters. Uh, mm, the list goes on and on. No way. Not me. Not not that. No. Not me. Not that. I'm not here. Not now. No way. The good news. The good news is that Jesus has other ideas. That God has taken us. God has taken us ordinary ordinary people who are full of grace and at times some other things and is constantly at work in us transforming us and making us new and calling our name and setting challenges before us and equipping us for that ministry because God didn't just take Jesus out of the tomb on Easter Sunday clean him all up and poof, send him up all shiny in the heavens. No, on Easter Sunday, Jesus came out of that tomb, scars and dried blood and dust all over his dirty clothes and sent Jesus into the world to commission you and to commission me for the work of reconciliation and redemption. God was turned loose on the world on Easter Sunday, creating a new thing for you and for me, for the not those people, for the world, for all of creation, all of it and all of us. And God will listen to our lame excuses until the cows come home. Not that, not them. No, not them. They hate us. Oh, no, not them. They'll not them. They're evil. God will listen to everything we can throw at God. And still God will propel us forward because in us God is always at work washing us and feeding us and molding us and bending us and recreating us and converting us to be who God desires us to be followers of the way the only way the way of Jesus Christ Amen.
us confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church people in need, and all of God's creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you sent your apostles Philip and James to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Restore all people who cry to you for help, especially turn their mourning into dancing, clothe them with joy, and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be present to faithful ones who are persecuted for following you. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now the deepest desires of our hearts. Prayers for peace in Ukraine and all places in the world where there is violence and conflict. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life giving spirit through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, we join their praise. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To you, the Lord says yes. To the, you, the Lord says come. To you, the Lord says be fed.
the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. God.